Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new 10.3 inch Android 11 tablet from Chewy, known as the HiPad Air. So this one's coming in at $179. We've got that 10.3 inch IPS display, an 8 core, 2 gigahertz CPU, and 4 gigabytes of RAM. The body on this is constructed of aluminum and it's coming in at 7 millimeters thin. I'm going to go ahead and boot this up and I've also got the keyboard attachment. It's a keyboard slash folio case for this and unfortunately the keyboard itself only connects to the device over Bluetooth but it magnetically attaches to the tablet itself and it should get the job done. I wish it had a trackpad built in but unfortunately it's just basically a folio case with that Bluetooth keyboard attached to it. The tablet just attaches to the back half of this. And since we have that folding case, it'll protect the screen while we carry it around. And as you can see, it sits upright just like this. Now, along with the tablet, you're also going to get your charger, which is only 5 volt, 2.5 amp, and a USB Type-C cable. So the screen on this is a 10.3 inch IPS, and they're claiming it's DCP3. There's a rear 5 megapixel camera and a front facing 5 megapixel camera. But as a lot of you already know, you don't buy a tablet for the cameras. I do like the fact that it's constructed of aluminum, and down here we have our USB Type-C charging port, plus dual stereo speakers built in. We've got a volume rocker over here on this side. On the top we have our power button, and unfortunately there is no headphone jack on this tablet, but we do have a micro SD card slot, which will support up to a 128 GB card. As for the specs on the new Chewy HiPad Air, for the CPU, we have the Unisoc Tiger T618. This is an 8-core ARM CPU. We have two A76 cores running at 2 GHz and six A55 cores running at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G52 up to 850 MHz. We get 4 GB of LPDDR4, a 10.3-inch IPS at 1920 by 1200 128 GB of onboard storage, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and the whole unit's running Android 11. And as for the version of Android this tablet's running, it's actually super clean. The only thing that was installed here were Google Apps, and we do have access to Google Play, as you can see here. No problem getting online with that AC Wi-Fi. I'm connected to my 5 GHz network. But there is one thing that this has a lot in common with other cheaper Android tablets, and that's no Widevine support. Now, if I head over here to Netflix, you'll see that our Widevine level is level 3, which is basically the lowest level we can go. We're only going to get standard definition content from our favorite streaming apps like Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, and unfortunately, that's just the way it is with tablets like this. When I initially booted this up and checked Widevine level with a specific app from Google Play, I got excited because it's stating that it's level 1, which would allow us to do HD content, but unfortunately, this app is not displaying the correct Widevine level. If you go into Netflix, you'll see you'll only have standard definition. Now this doesn't mean we can't do HD content from YouTube or your own videos. If you want to load them up on the internal storage or an SD card, you can play them at 1080p all day long. It just means that we can't get HD from Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Go. And as you can see here, I mean it does 1080p YouTube videos really, really well. We definitely have more than enough power. I also wanted to run some benchmarks. So first up, we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core of 388 Multi 1379. Moving over to a GPU benchmark, this is 3D Mark Wildlife with a 725, and finally, Antutu with a 193,487. Taking a look at these scores, it's definitely not a high end device, but this is falling right in line with these $150 to $200 tablets that are on the market right now. Now it's time to test out a few native Android games, and first up we have Asphalt 9. I'm actually really surprised at how well this is performing. On these chips, in the past, I've had pretty bad performance, especially on a race like this with a lot of stuff going on, but as you can see here, I mean, this is running really, really good. We have Call of Duty Mobile, and with this I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, where at low settings, it's running very well, and I expected it to. I've tested the Tiger T618 and other devices, and I've never had an issue with Call of Duty Mobile. So let's take it up just a bit to a harder to run native Android game. That's going to be Genshin Impact. With this one here, I am set to 60 FPS, but I'm on the lowest settings. If you want to go to medium, low mix at 30, it's going to run great. But running it at 60 FPS does take a toll on these lower end devices, and you will have to drop it down to low, but it will run as you can see here. Now 
I also wanted to test out some game streaming since we have that AC Wi-Fi built in. As long as you have a decent network connection, something like xCloud or Game Pass game streaming, whatever they're calling it nowadays, I think Xbox game streaming, does work pretty well. I still get some sound issues and I think that really comes down to my home network. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and first up we have N64 Conker's Bad Fur Day. I'm using the standalone version of Moopin 64 FZ from the Google Play Store, and I'm upscaled to 800 by 600. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to go a bit higher with this, but N64 does work well on these chips. Here's some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator at 1280 by 960 on the T618. Haven't had any issues with this one either. I mean, Dreamcast works amazingly on this device. And finally, for the emulation testing, here we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Tekken 6, 2x resolution, Vulcan back in, and with this one I could probably go up to 3x, but I just left it at 2 because the next game is a bit harder to emulate, but it does work pretty decently on this device. Chains of Olympus, 2x, Vulcan back in, running great. Recently, we've been seeing a lot of devices come to the market powered by this Unisoc T618, and for a budget device, I think it's a great little option. You know, we'll probably see more of these devices with the T618 until something better comes along that they can afford to put in these lower cost tablets. And I mean, there's just a lot of these tablets on the market with this right now, and the choices are basically endless. But what I do like about this, but what I do like about this tablet is we've got a 7,000 milliamp hour battery. We can get up to eight hours of battery life out of this. It's only seven millimeters thin, and it's fully constructed of metal. As performance goes, really doesn't have any advantage over the other ones that have been released with that T618, so you really gotta start looking at the design and the price. At $180, it might be worth it to some people to pick this up, and if you're one of those people, I will leave a link in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Chewy HiPad Air, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.